Hi, KCE. I loved hearing how much you all loved yesterday's book, Super Manny Stands Up. I got so many great responses. Shout out to everyone who talked about the problem and the solution. We know the problem was that there was a big bully in school, and the solution was Manny decided to stand up and tell him to stop it, which prompted other characters in the story to stand up for each other too. Today, we're going to be focused on our characters again, and especially how characters change from the beginning to the end of the story. Today, we are going to read a brand new book. This is my first time reading it. Carmela Full of Wishes. And your thinking job is to think about how Carmela's brother changes from the beginning until the end. You're going to be looking at what her brother says, his words, and his actions to be able to tell me how he changes from the beginning to the end. Also want to give two special shout outs before we start this book. So the first shout out goes to Xavier. Xavier included so many details from the text in his problem and solution response yesterday. And then I also want to give a shout out to Nuseba. Nuseba's responses have gotten stronger and stronger every single day because she is including more and more detail from the story. So today, as you think about how the brother changes from the beginning to the end of the story, Make sure in your response you're including a lot of detail. Let's go ahead and get started. Carmela, full of wishes. Carmela scootered along the uneven dirt path, watching men stoop to work with their hands, her birthday bracelets jingling and jangling. The thick greenhouse air smelled of marigolds and overturned earth and fresh manure. Carmela knew exactly what manure was, but she didn't want to think about that. Not today. Today, she awoke to candles in her pancakes and her mom sang, happy birthday to you, and told her, go on, Miha, make a wish. But Carmela's wish had already come true. She was finally old enough to go with her big brother. Carmela followed as he cut back onto the street at Freedom Boulevard, past the crowded bus stop and fenced off repair shop, past the old folks home where 200 old women waved smiles, past the huge home improvement store where her dad used to stand around weekend mornings waiting for work. Carmela tried to make small talk with her brother as their meal cart rattled, but her brother didn't make small talk back. He didn't want her tagging along. Too bad, she told him with her glare. Just outside the laundromat, she picked a lone dandelion growing among the concrete. Weeds. She pulled a breath and leaned toward the fuzzy white bulb, but just before she could blow, her brother butted in. Did you even make a wish? You're supposed to make a wish. Everyone knows that. Of course I made a wish, she told him, but it was a lie. Carmela didn't know. Carmela helped her brother sort colors one-handed, helped him load the washers one at a time, while their clothes spun, her imagination turned, each new thought ushered in by a jingle of bracelets. Her brother found the sound annoying and shot her a dirty look. Too bad, she told him with her glare. She jingled her bracelets as she rode up to Miss Maria's vegetable stand, imagining a machine built into her bedroom wall, one that would spit out anything she could think of, but mostly candies. She jingled her bracelets in line at the locksmith shop, imagining her mom sleeping in one of those fancy hotel beds she spent all day making for fancy guests.
She jingled her bracelets at the bodega down the block from their old apartment building, imagining her dad getting his papers fixed so he could finally be home. She jingled her bracelets outside the pharmacy, eyeing the shiny new bikes in the window. Her brother stopped in his tracks. Why do you have to be so annoying? She thrummed her bracelets at him and said, It's a free country. The only time she didn't reach for her bracelets was when her brother ducked into his friend's house. Carmela slumped down on the curb, silently imagining all the things she could turn him into. The slimy pink tail of a rat, a cockroach scurrying away from the light, a wheelbarrow full of manure left in the sun. She stared down at the dandelion in her hand. It seemed so much more important now that she knew it was a place to put her wishes. What if she made the wrong choice? Carmela tried to hop a curb on the long trip home, but her tire caught and her handlebars twisted and she went crashing to the concrete. Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. But then she saw her dandelion crushed beside the drain. She looked up at her big brother, warm tears rolling down her cheeks. He lifted, her, he lifted up her scooter. You okay? She shook her head and pointed. My wish. He took her by the arm and led her back up the block, past the laundromat and the flea market, past the greenhouses and the smell of manure, past the overgrown park and across the train tracks. He didn't stop until they made it to an abandoned farmhouse near a cliff overlooking the sea. Close your eyes, he said. Carmela closed them. Now, make your wish, he said. Carmela listened to the ocean's hum in the distance. She li listened to the squawking birds. She listened to the wind whistling past her ears. Then she opened her eyes. She saw hundreds of tiny white spores lifting into the air, floating out toward the far off surf. Let's go, her brother said. Don't you want to know my wish? She asked. He shook his head. If you tell, it won't come true. She looked back one last time, then took off her bracelets and followed her brother home. The end. So in your response today, you're going to write with tons of detail and tell me how did Carmela's brother change from the beginning until the end of the story. Be thinking about his words and his actions at the beginning and then how they were different at the end. I'm excited to see your responses and super proud of how hard you all are working from home. We miss you. Have a great day.